Hey everybody, it's Will here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another episode of the Blockware Intelligence YouTube channel. Today we're going to be continuing with our on-chain analysis tutorial series, talking about how to apply destruction today for episode five. Uh, if you haven't already watched episode three, which is on destruction, I highly recommend doing so. Uh, if you aren't familiar with what destruction is, we go in depth in some of the baseline understanding kind of parameters around what destruction is, what it means and how it's calculated. Uh, so again, we'll be building off of that prior video. And so it may get a little confusing. Some of the concepts that we'll talk about in today's video, if you haven't already watched that. So with that being said, uh, really would appreciate if you could hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what other metrics you'd like seen cover moving forward. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, dive into how to apply destruction today. So again, baseline explanation is on episode three. Okay, let's just do a, a quick overview, um, kind of reminder of what does destruction mean. Um, so kind of from a high level, an uptrend in destruction means that older coins, which are ideally more experienced market participants, are distributing. Um, whenever destruction is trending down, that means that older coins are uh, not being spent. Or there's a decrease in spending of older coins, but does not tell you that there's accumulation per se. Second point is that uh, very similar to long-term holders, we generally see destruction rise into strength and decrease into weakness. Uh, third is that we also see one-off spikes in destruction at capitulation bottoms. And lastly, high destruction is bearish. Low destruction is neutral because it does not take account, uh, take the demand side of the equation into account. So the first metric we'll be talking about uh, to basically apply destruction is liveliness. So liveliness is used to track broader kind of macro accumulation trends. It's, it's calculated by taking a ratio of coin days created and coin days destroyed. So it's coin days destroyed divided by coin days created. Whenever the metric is trending up, that indicates distribution because the amount of coin days being destroyed is outpacing the amount of coin days being created. When the metric is trending down, it means there's accumulation because there's more coin days being created than coin days being destroyed. So now let's go ahead and take a peek at the actual chart of liveliness since 2012. So we'll go back and walk through kind of Bitcoin's history here. So if we look before the 2013 double pumps, we saw a trend of accumulation. We then saw um, distribution into uh, kind of that first rally or the first of the 2013 double pumps. We saw a really heavy trend of accumulation between the 2013 double pumps, very strong distribution into that second pump, down into kind of the 2014, 2015 bottom of the bear market. We saw really heavy accumulation, slight distribution, another trend of slight accumulation into a heavy distribution trend into the 2017 run up. On the way down into the bear market, we saw another trend of accumulation, a brief spike in distribution. As we talked about, we see spikes in dormancy at kind of capitulatory bottoms at the bottom of the bear market. A lot of that was minor capitulation there at the end of 2018. Continued our accumulation trend all the way into kind of mid 2020. So very strong period of accumulation there into about kind of September, October area where we did start to see another uptrend in liveliness, again, indicating distribution. This continued until about kind of April, May timeframe until you finally saw another trend of accumulation, which is where we lie now. Uh, we are still in this period of reaccumulation after seeing distribution from late 2020 to kind of mid 2021. Next, we're gonna look at dormancy flow. So this is a chart that I've posted, uh, I wanna say two or three times in the last month or so. Uh, partially because we've kind of entered this buy zone on the metric. Uh, but of course, uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into what this actually means. So this is, this is used to track macro spending behavior of more experienced or older market participants. Again, um, the second point is that this is calculated by taking Bitcoin's market cap and then dividing by the USD denominated value of annualized destruction. So we're looking at the amount of USD uh, destruction relative to Bitcoin's market cap. So we're kind of getting this relative basis 
of the value of dormancy relative to the size of Bitcoin's market cap. High dormancy flow equals higher spending of older coins, just as you know, increase in dormancy indicates a higher uh, value of, of uh, older coins being spent. High dormancy flow equals bearish. Low dormancy flow equals neutral slash bullish, because again, this metric isn't showing accumulation. It's just showing a lack of spending from older coins. So that's neutral leaning bullish rather than uh, high dormancy. I mean, high dormancy flow is bearish because you're seeing a large amount of coins being spent from those more experienced market participants. So let's go ahead and look at dormancy flow. So we're looking at dormancy flow since about 2011. As you can see, uh, this rarely kind of hits this, this buy area down at the bottom, which we'll touch on in a second. You'll also notice uh, kind of this midline that goes across the middle of the screen. That's been another key area that dormancy flow has interacted with throughout Bitcoin's uh, history. So generally speaking, whenever we're kind of above that midline, Bitcoin is overheated, uh, kind of in this broader uh, overheated state. It's generally where Bitcoin sits historically in bull markets. So if you'll see in 2013, uh, hung out above there until it kind of got this retest between the two 2013 double pumps, uh, also interacted with this line throughout 2017. Since then, we've hung out in this regime below the line, but it's still also uh, kind of served as this very important level, because as you can see, this is where we topped out in 2019, as well as where Bitcoin topped out twice at the beginning of 2021, got rejected twice off of that kind of midline, that mid-white line. And that lies right at a, a value, dormancy flow value of 1 million. This bottom kind of buy zone area is where you can basically assess that there's asymmetry to the upside in the broader sense. So uh, this metric, the, the kind of buy zone shouldn't be used to say, okay, this is the absolute bottom. I'm going to go ahead and you know YOLO my entire life savings into Bitcoin. Uh, it's more so trying to say that the asymmetry is not skewed to the downside. Uh, so generally, a lot of these kind of broader macro uh, Bitcoin on-chain oscillators can be used more so to say, is the asymmetry skewed to the upper downside? Meaning in a broader sense, is the market kind of in this uh, state of overheatedness, for lack of a better term, or greed, rather than kind of depression or, or capitulation? And so dormancy flow, this kind of buy zone there at the bottom, gives you a good kind of gauge of when that asymmetry is not skewed to the downside. Uh, so as you'll see, whenever we kind of enter, whenever Bitcoin enters that kind of buy zone, it happens relatively briefly, but it indicates to you that you can start taking in, uh, you can start applying more heavy uh, you know, st strategies to your, to your dollar cost averaging into your positions or, or take on more risk with your buys. Uh, and the higher we get towards that kind of midline, the more kind of cautious you want to be or, or less risk you want to take on because there's the asymmetry is no longer as skewed as where it is in that buy zone there at the bottom. And so as you'll see right now, Bitcoin is currently at the fourth most oversold it's ever been, more oversold than uh, the summer bottom of last year around late July, early August, as well as the uh, COVID-19 crash on May 13th of 2020. Uh, the three previous uh, times where it's been this oversold uh, or at the end of 2018 at the bottom of that uh, bear market, at the end of kind of 2014 into 2015 at the bottom of that bear market, as well as uh, between 2011 heading into uh, 2012, kind of the bottom of that mini bear market. Um, so again, this is proved as a good area to average in more heavily or take uh, quote unquote riskier buys because that asymmetry is skewed to the upside or, or for lack of a better term is, is uh, you know, on a relative basis, um, there's more upside compared to the potential downside for BTC. So personally, the way I would apply this as we're saying now, we're closer to the very bottom of this buy area. We're at the fourth lowest ever you know, value in Bitcoin's history. I'm personally dollar cost averaging more aggressively than I was over the last call it year or so because that value is so low. And so again, from a high level, this is just telling us that there's a decrease in spending from more experienced older market participants relative to kind of the uh, aggregated uh, value of what dormancy has been relative to Bitcoin's market cap. Next, we're going to look at 90-day coin days destroyed, or CDD 90. 
So this is again used to track uh, macro spending behavior of more experienced, again, or older market participants, not to sound like a broken record here. A lot of these metrics are kind of showing the same thing because they are all based off destruction, right? But uh, they do kind of have a bit different of methodology. And when you see confluence across all of these metrics, that's what you really wanna be looking for. Uh, and so if you do get any kind of takeaway from this video, it's that by looking at several different measures or applications of destruction, that's kind of the biggest, or, or, or I shouldn't say biggest, but best signal uh, is when we see something called confluence, right? When we're seeing several indications from several different metrics that are kind of pointing to the same thing. So this metric in particular looks at the rolling sum of the last 90 days of coin days destroyed. So in essence, it just adds the value of destruction over the last 90 days. High CDD 90 equals bearish because you're seeing again, higher spending from those older coins. Low CDD 90 equals neutral slash, slash bullish because you're seeing a lack of spending of older coins, but doesn't indicate buying or demand on the other side of the equation. So when we look at this metric, uh, very similar trends in the others, whenever we see higher CDD 90 means higher dormancy or higher destruction, whenever we approach that kind of upper echelon of, uh, of the uh, oscillator, you wanna be ideally more cautious or kind of risk averse in that area. Whenever we're lower down on the metric, again, the uh, asymmetry is uh, skewed less to the downside and skewed higher to the upside. So as you can see now, we're kind of in this lower bound of the ratio showing you that very similar to dormancy flow, that there's a decrease in spending from older, more experienced market participants. So this would be another thing to see confluence with, with the other metrics we talked about, that there's a decrease in spending from those older coins. So guys, uh, that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, the application of destruction. Any other metrics that you'd like to see me cover, just let me know in the uh, comments and I'll get those videos pumped out for you. Uh, overall, again, I think the kind of biggest takeaway that I wanna leave you with from this video um, is that you wanna look for confluence across several metrics. When you have call it three to five plus different on-chain indicators all telling you something similar, that's a very strong signal relative to perhaps just one metric that's telling you something. When you have that confluence across the board, in my opinion, it strengthens the kind of case that you're building or conclusion that you're trying to come to. So thanks again, guys, for watching this video. Really appreciate it. Uh, the support, it's, I've been you know, kind of overwhelmed by the amount of support these videos have gotten. It really means a lot. It makes me feel like what I'm doing is worthwhile. So I uh, hope you guys all have a great day and uh, take care. I'll see you in the next one. I'll try to get another one pumped out by the end of the week. So. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.